I wanted to use probably my all-time favorite lighting technique that is actually more commonly referred to when photographing portraits. It's called short lighting. In portraiture, this is when the far side of the face is lit relative to the camera. And the opposite of this is called broad lighting and is when the side of the face closest to the camera is lit. There are definitely uses for both, but in my opinion, using short lighting is much more interesting and I think is much more commonly used in film and cinematography as well. I mean, take a look at any scene from a movie or film where two people are either talking to each other or someone is reacting to something. You'll almost always find a variation of the same concept, a key light lighting the far side of the face and a rim light. Okay, so this technique is referred to a lot with human portraits, but I don't see how we can't also use it for still life and products as well. For the first style, I put the bottle on a platform and I added some props. For the key light, I added a small light source shining through a plane with some leaf shapes punched through it. For the ambient light, I added a large area light and placed it in front of the gobo to help lift the dark shadows that the gobo initially casted. I also used the stock background surface to contribute to the fill light. However, I ended up adding an additional large fill light overhead the entire scene to fill in those shadows just a bit more because it was still too dark and sometimes you just gotta keep problem solving on the fly. And then I added another area light to camera left for the rim light. Back here on the background, I added another gobo-like light, but instead of creating a plane like I did before, I basically embedded the opacity image into the light itself, which is something only achievable in 3D, unfortunately, I think. So if you're a photographer and have no background in 3D, I completely understand if that sounded confusing. It was to me too, until I learned it, and it was one of the things that excited me about 3D to begin with. This may not be super obvious, but I also added a smaller light pointing into the background that added sort of like a small halo near the bottom left of the bottle, as well as acted as a light source shining through the liquid in the bottle, revealing more of the color of it, which I thought was a nice touch overall. And then lastly, I added a small light to give more illumination to the fern here in front of the camera. Because without it, it just looked a little too dark, so adding that light helped to brighten that up a bit. And that's pretty much it for this image. After putting all those lights together, I came up with this. For the natural light style, I used the same short lighting principle this time, however, I used specific window placements relative to the bottle as my light source. As you can see in this faux kitchen setup, I positioned this large window as the bottle's main key light. I used this window that's above the sink as my rim light. And for the fill light, I didn't quite add a separate source just for that. Instead, I used the light bouncing off of the walls of the room to act as a fill light source just as the light in a well-lit kitchen would behave in the real world. The key thing to remember in all of this is that I just used the same principles that I talked about earlier and applied them in a natural light setting. Now, when I had that set up, I noticed the picture was just a bit dark still. So in the end, I did end up adding area lights merely to enhance the light sources that already existed in the scene. The main ones were the key light, which is this guy right here, and a rim light, which is this guy right here. And that is pretty much it. Here's a last look at the two images and the answer to the hypothetical question, how would I light this bottle of hand soap today? Huzzah! I hope you found something helpful out of this. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Later.